I have three GoPros. The Hero 3 sits right up here watching over this studio. The Hero 5 I toss into the water or fire if I'm burning up a camera lens box. And the Hero 9 comes with me everywhere for behind the scenes, B-roll, and it's a permanent part of my cinematography cart in the studio. I have used GoPros a lot throughout the years and I've learned a few things. So I'm gonna share those tips with you. Hi everyone and welcome to Pal to Tech. For years, the GoPro was that weird action camera that, you know, <laughs> some kid had strapped to his head, performing all kinds of stunts on a bike or a surfboard or whatever. Well, GoPros have come a long way since being used as only an action cam. And now I think they can be an important part of your videography toolkit. So here are 10 tips to help you get better footage with your GoPro. For this video, I will be discussing the GoPro Hero 9 and higher. My first tip, just like with a regular camera, is to use an ND filter with your GoPro. You don't want your GoPro footage looking like, well, <laughs> it came from a GoPro. You need to make sure that your GoPro is not shooting at too high of a shutter speed. Remember, your shutter speed should never be faster than double your frame rate. So if you're shooting at 30 frames per second on your GoPro, then your shutter speed needs to be set to 1 60th of a second. Just look at what happens when you don't use an ND filter out in the bright sunshine. Have a look at this. Can you see the difference? If I see you shooting GoPro footage like that, it's going to make me mad, bad, and sad. Instead, pop on an ND filter, and now your GoPro has less light hitting the sensor on bright days. And therefore, you can slow down the shutter speed to get to the correct setting. Now, I recommend the type of ND filter that attaches directly onto the GoPro instead of an ND filter that just fits over and covers the existing clear lens cover. My favorite ND filters for the GoPro is the Polar Pro ND Filter 3-pack. And no, they didn't pay me to say this. Number two is to use your GoPro's ProTune settings. Think of ProTune as the ability to make your GoPro act just like a DSLR or mirrorless camera. ProTune allows you to set your bitrate, shutter speed, ISO, and white balance, among other things. So one setting change that I would recommend you make right now and just keep it that way is your bit rate. And it's in the section called ProTune. Change it from standard to high. And this will give you a bit rate of 100 megabits per second. You will get better looking footage and more flexibility in post-production. And speaking of post-production, if you plan on editing your footage, you might want to set your sharpness to low and your color to flat. This will give you lower contrast and less saturated footage to work with, which you can then adjust later on in post-production. One thing to keep in mind when shooting with GoPros, your GoPro does not allow you to ever set your aperture. It always remains fixed at f2.8. Therefore, you really need to pay attention to the other exposure triangle settings. I would make sure that my ISO is as low as the camera allows, which is ISO 100. And my max ISO is set to 6400, which will then give you the most flexibility. Yeah, the GoPro footage at higher ISOs can look very grainy, but again, it's better to have a grainy shot than a shot you can't see at all. And also in the ProTune area, this is where you can manually set your shutter speed to equal double your frame rate. When choosing the resolution on your GoPro camera, you'll see that the resolution choices that you make here on the top part of the menu will affect how many frames per second the camera will record. For example, if I set my resolution to 5K, I can then only choose either 30 frames per second or 24 frames per second. If I set my resolution to 4K, then I have a choice of 24 frames per second, 30 or now 60 and so forth. In general, the lower the resolution you set your GoPro to, the more options you have for how many frames per second that you can shoot with. Now, with frame rate and resolution, just like you would with any camera, you need to ask yourself, what are you going to be doing with your footage? If you are shooting mostly traditional talking headshots and not needing a lot of slow motion, then I would set the camera to 5K at 24 frames per second. This will most closely match what you would get out of, say, a Fujifilm X-T3 camera. 
Remember though that because GoPro often crops in on the footage, right? Such as when the camera is applying stabilization, having 5K is basically like shooting in 4K. And even if it isn't, it is always better to have a bit of that extra resolution. Now, if you're planning on shooting a mix of traditional shots and perhaps some B-roll footage as well, then I would set the GoPro camera to 4K at 60 frames per second. This will give you great resolution to work with as well as that extra flexibility to slow down your footage in post-production. It is also important to use at least 60 frames per second if you're wanting to get those action shots as well with fast moving subjects. And lastly, if you know you're gonna be shooting some serious slow motion footage, but you also want the best all around flexibility with traditional shots, then I recommend you set your footage to 2.7K at 120 frames per second. This will give you the option to really create slow motion footage while you're editing, but you also have the option to just drop that 120 frames per second footage on say a 30 frames per second timeline and use that as regular footage. It is the most flexible balance of frame rate and resolution I think that you can set on the GoPro. Now, I would not use the 240 frames per second option unless you absolutely need to pull as much slow motion out of the camera as possible. The quality on 120 frames per second overall is much better. The problem with 240 frames per second is that you're now forced to shoot at only 1080 resolution. Okay, let's do a test. I have a purple smoke grenade that I'm gonna shoot at 120 frames per second, and then we'll shoot one at 240. 40 frames per second, and you can see the difference between the two of them. <laughs> oh, that's hot. Now we're gonna try 240 frames a second, and here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and we're done. Again though, I am discussing the GoPro Hero 9. Future versions of GoPro cameras, such as the 10 and beyond, will allow more options for this. Hypersmooth is GoPro's setting that allows the camera to remain as stable as possible, like you're shooting with a gimbal, but you aren't. Now, each time you increase the amount of hyper smoothness, the image gets further cropped each time by 10%. I would not use the boost mode or rarely even the high mode unless I had a very good reason to do so. And I've actually found that the image quality is better with regular hyper smooth. I set mine right here most of the time. Obviously, if you have the GoPro locked down on a tripod, then turn off hyper smooth. Also, and very important, Important, I would avoid using hypersmooth if you're shooting with a slower shutter speed, such as 1 48th of a second or less. Tip number five is to use the correct field of view. Remember that GoPro doesn't have multiple lenses like some smartphones do. So when you are changing lenses in the GoPro settings, you're not really changing lenses. Rather, you're just digitally altering the image to various focal lengths and distortion corrections. This is where you need to experiment. But to start off, I would recommend that you use linear 19 by 39 millimeters to try and get that similar look as if you were shooting with a regular mirrorless camera. If you go too wide open on a GoPro, it will look like you're shooting with a GoPro. Just like shooting video with any camera, it is best to always set your white balance manually. With the GoPro, you do this in your ProTune settings. It allows you to adjust the color temperature in Kelvin. So basically, if you have a white piece of paper or a color chart, or if you don't have any of those, just look through the screen and adjust the color temperature until it looks as natural as possible. Remember that you can always adjust the white balance in post-production. The important thing here is to make sure that the camera is not constantly making color balance adjustments because it's set to auto. Don't set it to auto. Tip number seven has to do with exposure lock. If you have your GoPro set to automatic exposure and you suddenly realize that you wanna lock in an exposure setting on some point in your screen, simply tap and hold down the screen. 
If you're going to be shooting at night or in low light conditions, you might want to consider using Super View. Go into your settings and set your field of view to Super View. This tells the GoPro to use the entire sensor to read the light and it can help in reducing low light noise. I'd also lower my frame rate to 24 frames per second and combine that with setting a limit on my ISO to 1600 max. The microphone that comes with your GoPro is not the greatest mic in the world. You can can purchase a media mod which will improve the audio on the GoPro, but that's expensive. Now without the media mod, there's no onboard microphone jack on the unit itself, only this USB-C port right here. And if you want to plug a microphone like this into the USB-C port on the GoPro, you're going to need to use GoPro's brand of external mic adapter. Then you plug your external mic into the adapter and you have this dongly looking thing right here, right? However, if you do use an external mic, there are two settings that you need to check. First, you need to make sure that your media mod setting on the GoPro matches the type of mic that you're using. For example, this Rode mic right here is not a powered mic. The settings for media mod can be a little confusing to find because they're actually in a different place. Swipe down from the top and then to the left to get to them. You see where it says mods? By the way, if you don't have an ability to see or go into the mods menu on your GoPro, make sure that you have your USB-C mic connected to the GoPro. And you have four choices here, a standard mic or mic plus, or a powered mic or mic plus. The plus simply means that it's adding 20 decibels onto it. So in this example, because this Rode mic is not powered, I would choose standard mic. And frankly, the setting that I found the best for the microphones is to use the additional plus setting. And the second thing that you can do to improve the audio is to go into your Pro Tune settings and specify that you want a raw audio file and set it all the way to high. Now the GoPro will save both a video file and a separate wave audio file on the SD card, which you will then need to go and combine in post-production. My final tip may be a bit strange, but I wish someone had told me about it a long time ago. Basically, if you're used to using the touch screen on a smartphone, say the iPhone, right? And then you switch and you start using the touch screen on the GoPro, you will find the experience to be very frustrating. You will unintentionally change an important setting or switch something where it shouldn't be, the entire touchscreen experience on a GoPro compared to a smartphone is vastly different. It's like learning a second language, but there's a fix for that. It's really simple. Go slowly. Just act like you're in slow motion when you're touching your GoPro screen. It will actually save you time in the long run because you won't set something incorrectly and have to go and do it again. Well, there you have it. Those are my 10 tips for today. I hope you found the video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I am going to be signing off now, but have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you next week. Take care.